Hey, what's up, guys? It is the Ace Michael Show. Ace Michael's happy to be here with you. I always say that I'm happy to be here with you, and that's not just like a thing that I say. Like, I really am happy to be here with you. I have chosen a career that is my favorite thing to do. So I actually make money doing what I love, and that's great. I don't think you ever get better than that. If you can make money doing what you love, just think about that. What do you love to do? I don't know you. I don't know what you love to do. Don't say it out loud. Don't tell. Don't give the other people the, the benefit of knowing. Just be in your head right now. Just think about if I could be making a living at dot, 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 what would I be doing? And just think about that. Think about because my grandpa used to say, he used to say a lot of different weird, crazy things. But one of the things he said that made sense was he said, you can always get money. You can't always pursue your dream. That's what he said. Welcome to the Ace Michael Show. Today, my guest is a fabulous. I brought another host on my show. That's how big my show is. My show is so big that we can host other hosts. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Welcome to the show. First timer on my show, Priscilla Moy is with us today. Priscilla, how you doing? I'm Dorla? great. I'm great. Welcome how to the Ace you? Michael yes, Show. Yes, thank you for having me. Always an honor. Priscilla, are you doing what you love in life? Are you living the life of your dreams? Oh, 100%. That's why I moved out here. So here we are. And you moved out here from? I moved out here from Chicago, Illinois, born and raised. World of crime and pizza slices. I love it. The Midwest is the best. Did you know any mobsters when you were in Chicago? No, but I have family that do. Oh, well, there you go. You covered your base. (laughs) I know. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe not me. I don't need to, but if I got a tie, just kidding. Right, right. And you're not going to talk about anything you don't need to talk about. That's for sure. So Midwest. So you come from the Midwest. Yes. To Vegas. Why Vegas? Well, it has to do with my career. So originally, right, like I just came on. I know primarily you see me as a TV host, but I've only been doing that since October of last year. Oh, wow. So that was not primarily my my goal. That was not something that I knew would come into fruition. I think that's something that was a happenstance. But um, I've actually been acting and modeling for almost 14 years now so that's primarily my job girl when... you don't even look old enough to be modeling for no 14 years you look like you 14 yeah what are you talking well about? thank you thank you thank you, you i'll be turning stop 30 playing. this year start talk, so... toying with my emotions yeah so um you know i i did that and that was probably the biggest thing that I loved. When I was younger, fashion was probably the biggest thing Mm -hmm. for me. So I thought I was going to become a designer. But I also loved being in front of the camera. Camera work was always just something that drew me. Mm -hmm. But I did not want to start off learning camera acting. I think film acting is entirely different the way that you train and the the certain methods that you'll train versus what you get from theater. So I had started theater um, in high school when I was younger. And I knew that if I wanted to succeed in this business, the biggest thing that I would have to do was to educate myself, was a good experience to find out what it takes to do what I want to do. Because everyone wants to be an actor. Everyone wants to be a model. Everyone wants to be a star, right? But what is the main reason why you want to do those things? Is it for the stardom? Is it for, you know, to look pretty on camera or have pretty pictures or whatever? And so I knew being... Asian, being petite, because this was probably early 2000s, times have changed, but starting out where there was no social media, really. There was Facebook and MySpace, but pe- people didn't use that for business, <laughs> we, we right? We don't use the MySpace The MySpace or the here, Zanga, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, those or things. I see Yes. <laughs> no one used those for business. It wasn't to network or to market. You post, right. you know, hey, this is what I ate today, or hey, today, this is blah, 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 spent time with family, but it was yes. statuses, you know? So I was like, I can't walk into an agency I can be like every other girl they're gonna look at me and be like okay what are we gonna do with this 5'2 girl she wants to be a model oh yeah okay whatever an actress okay yeah she's Asian but where does she fit so I was like let me start off in theater let me start being in front of the camera modeling wise let me start creative directing right I love fashion let me start doing my own photo shoot so I Mm -hmm. networked around Chicago started to get a portfolio made 
then I knew I was going to study theater acting in college. So I auditioned. I went to Illinois Wesleyan. That's on in Bloomington Normal, Illinois. Woo-hoo! And they have a huge um, theater program. They're very well known for the musical theater department program primarily. But they'll mm-hmm. have BFA acting, BA theater arts, BFA musical theater, and BFA design tech. So they're very, very, very well known in the theater community to having great alumni. The way that they train, the intensity, blah, blah, blah. So I went to college, got my degree in 2015. And after that, I knew theater was not the world I wanted to stay in. Mm. I wanted to do acting, but the film world. Now, I knew nothing about how to navigate film world because you're taught how to audition for theater. You're taught how to hold yourself in cattle call auditions. You're taught about how to be prepared, how to dress, how to look, what type of monologues to do, what type of package to have, what type of headshots to have. But Film and TV is very much about individuality. People thrive on on look, right? Like yes. they thrive on yes. someone who's different, where they can put you when it comes to the eye. It's not so much like theater. So I stayed in Chicago. I started to market myself. I did the transition. Um, started getting with agencies and started to audition for shows like Chicago Med, Chicago PD, you know, do commercials and stuff. And I had already built up. So in this time, I have my training, I have my degree, I built up a resume, I have a modeling portfolio, right? I have all these prints. I found out why I want to do what I do and the craft behind it. And I knew that Chicago was not going to do it for me particularly. It might Mm -hmm. work for some people, but that wasn't the city that I was going to thrive in. You know, people love to move straight to New York, straight to L.A., straight to a big city because they think that's where you need to be, but they don't go prepared. They don't have, like, a a plan. They don't have, like, a drive. You know, they they want a city to make them. And so I was like, well, I've traveled to Las Vegas a lot when I was younger. I love the city. I love the vibe. It's close to L.A. You know, it's cheaper than L.A., and it – I just need to sort of get my feet wet on the West Coast. Let me find out how things work out there. So I came in 2019. I think I was going to turn 26 that year, but I was already ready, right? I had experience with agencies. I was industry smart. I knew what to avoid, what, you know, was good, was bad, how to catch on to red flags, what I needed to do to kind of make sure I navigated Vegas properly and marketed myself in a way where I was going to be taken seriously, right? And I had no idea what the film industry was like here or or the fashion industry Mm -hmm. or the photography, but it was something I was going to find out. But I thought I was smart enough, and I knew that I was like, okay, I know I'm not going to try to get in with the wrong crowd. I'll at least get my feet wet, feel the city out, learn the vibe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when I came here, I was head first into, okay, what are the agencies here? What are their clients like? Like, who are the photographers here? Let me get the feel what the type of people are around here Mm -hmm. and kind of solidify myself as someone that I came here to be. And that's kind of how everything ended up That's how it unrolling. manifested. So. Yeah. So let me ask you this, because this is kind of the elephant in the room. Uh, since we're both Asians, um, it, there used to be in the film industry really a very limited amount of roles that an Asian woman could get, let's say, 10 years ago. But now we see, you know, especially like in the superhero genre, we see like every new movie, they've got to have a black one and an Asian one and a trans one and a bisexual one. And, you know, that's just how things are done now. What are your thoughts on that? Do you feel like that's more encouraging for you as an actor? Do you say, oh, there's more diversity now? Yes. I mean, back then I had no idea how it was going to unfold you know Mm -hmm. and I think being in the industry you learn how segregated it can be and how diverse it is not until they have to right Mm -hmm. you kind of think oh like especially when you're younger oh like it's not that bad or there's going to be something it's just going to happen I'm not going to worry about that but eventually as time has come on you learn how people see things from the other side, from an agent's point of view, from a casting director, from an executive producer, what they Mm -hmm. look for. And it's kind of the dichotomy of everything's about look, but it can make or break you. And it's nothing to do with talent most of the time. Mm -hmm. And so as time went on, and you see that it kind of goes hand in hand with a culture thing as well, because a lot of Asians don't know how to speak up in times of when they don't see many roles, or lots of things are not as fair, because a lot of Asians, and I've been, you know, a victim of this, where you just want to be grateful for anything that you can get. You don't want to speak out of line because you're scared that if you do too much, you demand too much, no Mm -hmm. one's going to want to work with you. So I think 
I kind of stand for one of those that are just very, you know, I get it, I'm Asian, that's not going to change. So you can't try to make right, me feel right. less than because I'm Asian and you don't know where to place me. There's not enough roles. Because there is. You can easily, as much as you can make that role a different other color, you can make it also an Asian role. Obviously, if it can't be for script purposes, for a storyline, then yes. Yeah, yeah. However... I feel like we've been kind of suppressed for too long. Now you're slowly starting to see that it doesn't have to be the crazy rich Asian role. That right. That's why they use Asian actors. It could be something like in Barbie. You can make one of the Kens Asian, and that's what they did, thankfully. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah. glad it's slowly revolutionizing, and I'm, I'm glad that I'm now in it to, at, at a point in time when things are starting to really open up, you know? <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it's very good. When I was a young man... There was only, you know, like an Asian actor was, of course, Bruce Lee. Um, but you could only really have Asians if there was a scene with a Yakuza or, you know, she's going to come in and she's going to be like the geisha girl. Then we need an Asian actress. But it was the same thing for black actors. Like, I remember people were telling me when I was in high school that I should pursue acting. Well, I didn't want to pursue acting. I mainly chose to pursue music because there weren't any roles for black guys besides being a pimp or a drug dealer mm -hmm. or a killer. I didn't want to do any of those roles. So I was like, nah, I, I don't know about that acting thing. That's not really my bug. But um, I think that there is a lot more diversity. And I have mixed feelings about it in the sense that I don't think that we should make Superman Asian just because we can. I think that it doesn't really tie into the story. There's no reason he couldn't be. There's no reason why Jesus couldn't be Asian. But we've already got this kind of image in our head of who Superman, Batman, right. Luke Skywalker, all these people are. Right. Why not write new stories and put right. new characters right. out there? That's my feeling. Yeah, no, that's what I meant by like there's certain roles that are very much like that, like that's like a, a like there's history behind Superman, right? right like it's right. not new, you know? So there are things like that when it goes to a storyline or something that's very adamant about look mm -hmm. that you're trying to either recreate. It's someone from history. It's someone that everyone knows. Right. It's a little different, but you know what I meant was like when there's just a role and you got the friend and then they decide that they want that friend to be, but he can easily be an Asian friend. It doesn't have to be a yeah, certain color, yeah. right? But there was a lot where they just couldn't see it, right? Like in film, when they write a, like a new story, a new drama, they're more susceptible to cast a lot of different other races. I, before, like before maybe this year where everything all at once yeah, became such I, a big thing. Everything all at once but, was you a know, great film. You saw it, right? Yes, and they could make Ooh, those roles. So those roles movie. didn't have to be Asian. They could have be anything. But like, you know what I mean? Like you can easily, it, it kind of showed that Asians can do more than just be what you envision them to be. And mm -hmm. I had an argument with an agent at one time. He was trying to tell me what I should and shouldn't be doing because he didn't agree that I had dreams, that my mm -hmm. dreams and my goals were too far-fetched. Because as an actor, he told, he would only submit me for things that looked like I was 12. And he told me, <laughs> the only way you're going to make money is if you play that Asian grocery store owner with the accent. Oh my god! He's like, that's the only way. He's really? like, you have to, yes. He's like, that's the only way. And then one time he he sent me to an audition. He wanted me to audition for this movie filming on in L. A. So low pay, maybe like a hundred dollars a day, mm. and it was a fourteen year old Indian girl. Now oh, wow. I understand Indians are Asian, but Indians are a different type of Asian. And yes. respectfully, this story, this script was surrounding an Indian family culturally. So respectfully, that's not for me. Give that to an Indian. But I told him this, and he blew up at me saying, "They can change. I've been in this industry a long time. They can change the role. They could do whatever." I'm like, respectfully, I will have to decline because that's not morally in me. I believe yeah. this is about an Indian family. It should go to an Indian actress. I should not be taking this. And has an Indian name. They're not going to put a 30-year-old actress to play a 14-year-old girl, <laughs> Indian girl, that I look not, right? Like, right. it's one of those things. And so uh, he was sending me nasty messages how, yeah, good luck, you're not going to make it, blah, blah, and blah. And he's your agent? He was, yes. Oh, well, and he, he was very old school. He told me that, you know, only tall girls look good in clothing. I would ruin a fashion show. Oh, no. And you know what I mean? And it's just Never. one of those where agents love to talk down because they think that, 
everyone that walks in their room, they trust them to make their dreams happen. So there's like this ego, there's this power, right? Yeah, yeah. These agents think they have, and they think that you need to listen to them because they're the ones that will guide you. When in reality, they control how successful you get, right? They control if they want to submit you for a job, they yes. control how your image should be. And I'm very much an individual. I've learned how to not need agents, right? right. I, I know how to get jobs on my own. I market myself properly because of these reasons where agents tell me I shouldn't be doing something thing because they feel I shouldn't right well, let's help out let's help out some folks okay so give me three to five things uh, that an actor should learn how to do to steer their own course because I, I've heard from other actors the same thing that some agent told me this I've even read stories where some agent told someone famous I think it was um, I think it was doggone it the most Academy Award winning actress Meryl Streep Mm. I think some agent had told her she was never going to make it because she wasn't pretty enough. Mm -hmm. Well, she obviously, oh, she yeah. did make it. Yes. Right? So give me a couple of uh, pointers that we can help the people that are trying to get started. What would you say? Like maybe three to five different pointers you would say, you know, number one, don't listen to agents that, that tell you you can't oh, because clearly you can. Yes. So the first things first, I would find out who you are as a person and why you want to do what you do. I ask this a lot for age. That's for the actors, first thing that you say. Actors right? and models, I ask the first thing is why do you want to be an actor, right? Depending mm. on their answer, is it for the fame? Is it for the craft of it? Is it because you saw someone in a movie one day and you said, I want to be there? I don't care really what it is, but I always ask them because that's going to depict how much drive you're willing to have mm. to reach a certain goal. And if you want to be a great actor, you could be an actor, but do you want to be a great actor? Mm -hmm. You know, like depending on, and I realize that why people want something shows how much they're willing to give and how much they care. If it's for clout, you see like they'll bounce to people, bounce to people. They just want to be the recognition, they want the after, sure, but they don't sure. do the work in between. So that just kind of shows. The second thing is take acting classes, train. Acting is not easy. Acting is not some lines on a paper someone else wrote and you just say it. And, mm. and then all of a sudden you're an actor, that's not the point. You know, like training, you find out how many different methods there are and then you kind of form your own way and how to prepare for a role. Every role is different. You know, studying theater, I learned the Stanislavski method. That's kind of the method that I choose that when it goes up. to That's acting. That's L.A., baby. Yes. I mean, yeah, a, lot of, a lot of film actors, they love Meisner, and I understand that. Um, no, Meisner, yeah, come on. Yeah, no, but sure. mine is personally, pers <laughs> right, and I, I don't, you know, talk on anyone. I believe some people mix them, and I agree with that, too. They, but, you know, have to find your own way to approach a role because, what you'll learn when you're studying acting, and that's what I'm telling people you need to study acting, is because there's so much more behind the lines that you're saying. No, you, you know. I want to interject here because you mm -hmm. mentioned Stanislavski yes. and Meisner. Mm -hmm. I know that Pacino was Stanislavski, mm -hmm. but was De Niro Meisner or was De Niro also Stanislavski? Or does it matter? Do you even know? Does anybody even care? I think no. Honestly, I have no idea what. Um, I know Pacino was. was Stanislavski. By you know, I think a lot of film actors are geared towards method acting. Um, uh -huh. So I I know a, a lot of them do study Meisner and they go towards method acting. I don't know what De Niro was, but I think it, it should matter to the actor. Did you That's ever see Godfather Two? Yes. You know the character Hyman Roth mm -hmm. in Godfather Two was the acting coach for Al Pacino. Oh, that's amazing. That's and great. did you see uh, Austin Powers? Yes, I have. And you know the lady, what's her character name? I can't think of her character name right now, but Mindy Sterling mm -hmm. is the actress who plays the one that goes, send in the gods, mm -hmm. right? She is Mike Myers' comedy coach. Oh, nice. That's great. That's Isn't fantastic that to have them on, on sets, too. That kind of, yeah, how little, that plays little out. Piece of, yeah, a little piece of uh, trivia there. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Here we are. Those are good good pieces of advice for sure, definitely. Um, we're going to run out of time, and I hate to run out of time because it just happens. Time is never our friend on the show. Um, but I do want to ask you more about the acting mm -hmm. from the perspective of technique. Yes. So I'm always curious because I'm mostly music. Like, I don't do acting. I deal with music artists, and so we have a way that we process and we make songs, you know. Do you have a way that you approach a role that is your go-to? Yes. So I love to do, in pure Stanislavski and theatrical 
methods are to like look behind the backstory of the characters. Hmm. You know, who are you? Why are you here? Who are you talking to? What do you want? What's the purpose? What's the time? Like you look at first of all, what's the time period? You know, you know, who are you? Like, are you a married person? Like, what do you do for a living? Because all of those things, if you think about the human complexities that we all have, we all have something that drives us to do what we do in life, whether it's in platonic relationships, romantic relationships. You know, there's a way we go about things and a complexity to how we think, right? So mm-hmm. when you're, and I remember because I had an acting class, it was called Actors Rep, and it wasn't a class that was accredited class, but it was something all BFA actors had to go on Thursdays at five. Everyone had a monologue they had to memorize, and when it's your week to go, we had about like maybe five people that go per week. You would do your monologue in front of everyone, and then the teacher, or our professor, would literally, after you're done the first time, they would ask you, okay, who are you? You'd have to answer. Mm. And he'd be like, okay, who are you speaking to? Then you'd have to answer. What do you want? And a lot of times that is the way where actors have no answer because they don't know what they want. And so when you think about going towards a role and you're thinking about, okay, this particular scene, this particular scene, what exactly do I want from this person in this time? Do I want them to say they love me? Do I want them to, you know show emotion to me like it's just something because we don't speak to each other without a reason behind it right there's always right, a reason right. why we're saying something we go to a certain person oh and i so love this yes to know yes, true what drives you why would the character do this and then obviously the time period you know the gender all of the the type of social class you're in will all depict how the character would carry themselves Right? Are they middle mm-hmm, class? Mm-hmm. Are they wealthy? Are they extremely poor? Or you know what I mean? Do they come from a family of immigrants? Like it, it depends on how they would navigate their life. And so to know all of this, to do all of this homework, and then when the scene goes, like you'll know how to make choices based on what the character wants in that moment in time and how they would naturally be. Well, this right? is good. You're good. Yes. Oh, You're good. You. <laughs> um, so we got time for one last thing, and it's a game that we're going to play okay. that I actually literally just made up right now. Mm-hmm. And in this game, I'm going to give you two characters that are famous characters. I'd like to know which one you would prefer to play if you could cast yourself and why. Okay. Okay? Mm-hmm. So you get the choice. This is number one. That was a drum roll. Number one is Mrs. Santa Claus or Jesus' mom, Mary. You get to pick only one. Which one would you like to play? Mrs. Santa Claus or Mary, Jesus' mom, Mary. Not Mary Magdalene, but Jesus' mom, Mary. Okay. Jesus' mom. And, and why? I think she's a very complex person. You know, I mean, I'm a Roman Catholic. <laughs> Are you talking I, some smack on Jesus' mom? No, I know. I think that's amazing, though. I think as an actor, though, to have that sort of, you know, there's yeah. a story there. Like, yeah. I love a story. I love someone that I can dig into and I can work with the time period, the the way people viewed women at the time and how she got around to the pregnancy. She yeah, gave birth yeah. to, you know, Jesus Christ, right? Like there's a lot about Mary that I feel no one really talks about. I think to show that, that, that would be amazing. I think that would be a challenge. Right, like I'm, I'm not wow. saying Mrs. Santa Claus when it wouldn't be a challenge, but you know Mrs. what I mean. Mrs. Santa like, Claus maybe, but I think I'm I'm with you there. These are you know? my personal opinion. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you. Not just women. Okay. Um, in a biopic, an autographical picture, Prince or Michael Jackson? Ooh, Michael Jackson, 100%. 100%. Really? 100%. 100% Yes, though? yes. Why? Yes. Why 100%? I, first, well, first of all, I'm a huge fan of Michael Jackson. So okay. maybe I might be biased. Not that I'm not a fan of Prince, but like I grew up listening to Michael Jackson along with okay. you know, myself. Okay. But I believe when, you know, you, I'm so intrigued by him, not because of his music and his talent, but because of his life. I think you're learning I love a story. But like it's sad in a way where someone that has achieved that much and has gone through so many different, you know, times of his life that were detrimental, right? You kind of, people can talk about it as a, a rise, but also a decline yeah, in life, yeah. right? And I think to tell a story like that, how to tell it in a very genuine way without, you know, just from a human being side, I think people forget that these people are humans. And Michael Jackson, to this day, like, rest in peace, I don't want to ever speak ill of the dead, but, like, he you still have people saying this, saying that, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And it's entirely sad because people forget he was a human and he gave all his all to his 
his job and his work and for his fans and to please, but he still did not feel satisfied enough within himself and in his life because he never was able to have his own life, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. Everything he yeah. did, he couldn't go to the grocery store. He couldn't do anything without shutting down an, an entire store just to go get milk or something, right? It's crazy, right? And yeah. I yeah. feel like that would be that would be a great, 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 another challenge, but a great story to tell. Yes. The last one I get, and this is going to be me speaking as a CEO of a major film company. We're going to make a trilogy that's going to be you starring Okay, Priscilla, mm -hmm. you're starring in this trilogy film series as either Mother Teresa or Mother Nature. Go, which one are you going to be? Mother Nature. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you don't think I'm going to answer it the way I'm going to. Yeah, like, you die Mother every Nature, time. Really? <laughs> Mother Nature, how sad is she? <laughs> Imagine. Think about it. How sad is Mother Nature? Think, uh, okay, we're going to do a trilogy. Uh -huh. Right. Yes. Think of all the different. How long you know? Nature's obviously been around. She she's involved. She's evolving based on you know who's thriving on it. What's happening in the world? What's yes. happening within the environment? Yes. If you focused on different periods of just however long planet Earth has been around, you see drastic change. And like, you can explore why is that. Let's dig into that. How it genuinely is affecting it. How much Mother Nature is giving but doesn't receive in return. And so how Ooh, things okay. have evolved okay. compared, like, you know, animals, you know, certain humans, how humans are evolving, species are evolving, how species become extinct, how plants, how, you know, bacteria, things are just not the same as it used to be and why. Wow. Yeah. Deep. Yeah. Hey, man. Priscilla Moy on the show today, <laughs> getting deep with the Mother Nature conversation. <laughs> Mother Nature on the Moon, oh, coming Mother soon Nature. in Ace Michael's film, starring Priscilla Moy. Listen. Priscilla Moy is back in Mother Nature Part 2. Mm -hmm. You thought she you was thought. Wendy then. <laughs> I love it. Priscilla Moy, thank you for being on the show thank today. You Please for come back me. anytime. Yes. You can come and hang with us. We love you here. And guys, if you ever want to be on the show, we'd love to have you. Just send a little message say, I want to be on the show. We'll get you on the show. And that is What's Up. It's the Ace Michael Show, man. Live the life you love. Love the life you live. Thank you. Excellent work, Priscilla oh, Boy. Thank wow. you. I think I was major shock factor for you. You didn't know I what was coming it. in your studio I today. love it.